motion to approve the September 8, 2020 minutes passes unanimously. All right, agenda revisions and submission of documents and or motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas. Anyone have anything at this time? All right, update on COVID-19, Harold. Yes, Mayor, Council, I do actually have um, a couple of things to, to go over regarding um, COVID-19. I actually have a few things to go over tonight. A couple of things that I wanna point out on this is so if you see um, in terms of the two week cumulative increase in cases, you can see that we've all, we've gone into the um, pink category, which is equivalent to this one. But if you look at the average positivity and declining or stable, stable hospitalizations in Boulder County, you can see that we're actually in, in, in the green category here. And so those are two important things. The first graph that I want to talk about, and, and you're going to see this twice tonight, is um, they have actually been collecting the data in terms of what's happening within Boulder County as it relates to um, the CU students and staff versus all other cases um, with, within Boulder County. Um, and it, if you look at this graph, this is really um, showing us something that's really important, um, really important as I was discussing it with Jeff. So when you look at the 30 plus category, um, relatively flat in terms of what we've been seeing. 23 to 29, you can see the blue line and it's re remaining relatively stable. Zero to nine and 10 to 17, you're seeing a, a similar move in terms of what's been happening recently. This slide you will see again, um, and this is really the positivity uh, rate that you can see. You can see at this point where we were at 1.7. Um, right now, I think we're, um, at a previous version, we were at 4.1. It may be a little bit higher as the slides updated. Boulder County, we're at a 62.5% hospitalization rate. The state average is 129.3 and the national is at 170.4. How many people do we have hospitalized in Longmont right now with COVID? Um, based on what I heard this morning from Dan Eamon, we, we had uh, zero patients in our local hospitals. Um, with COVID. So again, that's all information that we have to take into account. Okay, the next thing I would like to go over with you, I'm going to introduce Peter uh, Gibbons. Um, this is what I talked to you all about last week. In uh, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, I am Peter Gibbons. I'm the Recovery Manager and Emergency Management Coordinator for the City. Uh, the purpose of my presentation tonight is to brief you on our recovery funding budget from two funding sources, uh, the, the Coronavirus Relief Fund, or CVRF for short, and HUD's CDBG and CDBG CV funding all of which were provided by the CARES Act. Uh, CVRF uh, is funding provided to the states from the CARES Act. In our case, the Department of Local Affairs, uh, or DOLA, is the primary administrator. Uh, Boulder County is our local primary recipient, and Longmont is a sub-recipient for this funding. So Longmont received two allocations of CVRF, totaling $4.3 million. Uh, this was determined on a per capita basis and Boulder County provided uh, one allocation and Weld County provided the, under, uh, the other allocation. Uh, the coronavirus relief fund rules are flexible but require careful navigation to ensure long-term funding retention uh, through the eventual audit by the Office of Inspector General or OIG. So the three primary rules include all expenses being necessary and directly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, they cannot have been budgeted for in the adopted 2020 budget and all expenses must have been incurred between March 1st and December 30th of this year. Um, unfortunately, the coronavirus relief fund cannot be used to fund, uh, cannot be used to fund revenue shortfalls or replacements for local governments, um, as in we cannot use it to fill uh, budget caps in bulk. Um, as is common to see in disaster recoveries, we've established uh, four primary categories to serve uh, in the recovery uh, from this event. So moving into the coronavirus fund recovery spending plan section, um, we're applying a basic theory of spending to expend this fund safely and completely. Um, I do want to point out the restaurant voucher program. So there's 20,000 there, 10 to, to refund what council used 
for the first program, but another 10,000 to um, create another round in the restaurant voucher program. Basically, just to summarize, we're, you know, the, we put these categories together so that we could make sure that we were bolstering each of those recovery categories throughout our community. So as you will remember, we came in on the front end of this and we, repur we repurposed CDBG funds. We then had the CV funding come into the organization and then we had another round of CV funding hit us. And uh, so when we combine these funding sources and across uh, and sort across the different funding uh, recovery categories, you can see similar distributions of funding across each of the categories of recovery. So it retained that integrity of how we distributed uh, the funding across each each of those uh, across each of those funds. So the next steps in our recovery include continuing to evaluate unmet needs in the community and the organization and to ensure eligibility by following all funding guidelines. I have Tyler Stamey here. I know you all have been having a lot of questions regarding the Pike Road project in um, South Hoffman Street. So it, just, just that, uh, that's right down the street from me. The light is in. There's Correct. zero. There's zero percent chance that light's coming out. And Correct. so let's let's spend two minutes on this. First and foremost, I want to touch on South Kaufman itself. It is a local street. It's not a collector. There's no plans and no discussion to change it from a local to a collector on this section of roadway. The old the oldest data I could find was from 1995. Back in 1995, we had about a little more than 450 cars a day on this section of roadway. We have some additional data points since 1995 and until now, 2012, 2018, 2019. You'll see that it's relatively stayed the same. It hasn't really grown, hasn't gone down, it stayed the same, which is really indicative that it is really functioning as a local street. It's not a collector. It's not providing access to new destinations. So the uh, traffic signal, again, was really impetus from what we heard from the public feedback at our open houses. We needed we heard very loudly and clearly that we needed to do more at Pike and South Kaufman. One of the criteria in that program says, in order for physical devices, which would be your speed tables, permanent radar signs, we're looking for a minimum daily traffic volume of 750 cars a day. The color of cannabis and other organizations are advocating for opportunities to diversify the cannabis industry ownership through marijuana delivery in jurisdictions across the state. Um, but I am here to speak in support of the resolution to name Swim Beach at Union Reservoir after my father, Fred Wilson. I'd like to take a few moments to talk about what Union Reservoir meant to my dad and why I think we should name the beach in his honor. Um, the air quality in Longmont is poor primarily due to fracking notwithstanding the recent fires but this is the fracking is causing our air quality to be poor on a consistent basis let me get to the point my name is brian ortega i am uh, currently the director of logistics for sharp solutions we are a courier service here in colorado focusing in business to business delivery um we're trying to transition in business to consumer god willing uh, trying to get patients on medicine i'm also the former director of veterans for natural rights Mayor Bagley and council members, why does the city of Longmont need to hire an environmental planner? A couple of good reasons are, one, the planner will ensure that developers who are looking to build in Longmont have a good understanding of what is required for code compliance. And two, the planner will also ensure that developers are aware of the city's important wildlife and natural resources that need protection. On September 8th, the City Council approved several revisions to the Municipal Code chapters dealing with the protection of streams and creeks, wetlands, riparian areas, and habitat and species protection, based on comments brought up by Longmont resident Ruby Bowman. In reading through the version of the code presented to Council tonight, I don't see those revisions reflected. Will these revisions be added prior to publication? Again, I'd also like to reiterate the need for Longmont to fill the environmental planner position that was approved in the budget for this year. I'm here tonight as Chair of the Board for Sustainable Resilient Longmont. I wanted to let you all know tonight that this week is National Drive Electric Week. Sustainable Resilient Longmont is celebrating with two events that I wanted to make sure you know about. 
First, we'll ha we're having a live webinar on um, this Thursday, the 24th, from 6 to 8 p.m. This event will also feature a virtual tour of three different types of electric vehicles. Then on Saturday, we'll be hosting an EV motorcade down Main Street. Starting at 5 p.m. at Roosevelt Park, we'll head south on Main and take a U-turn at 3rd Ave. There's a lot in the news the last few weeks or the last week about whether there is hypocrisy when federal judges are named and confirmed. I think we can bring this discussion front and center here in Longmont. This week, PRPA will be discussing whether to sanction a plan that includes building a gas plant for electricity generation. This will commit us to fracked gas over the next 40 years, or we will be left with stranded assets. I'm actually calling about the uh, proposed cannabis delivery bill, and I am encouraging you all to adopt it. I mean, it would certainly be um, helpful for patients, especially people who can't get out or are concerned about COVID. In today's environment, patients find it necessary to have safe, discreet, and reliable home delivery. It is extremely necessary that you allow this service to your constituents. The reason I'm calling is kind of like what Mark Twain said, you know, uh, the law treats everybody equally. Uh, both the rich and poor are re uh, uh, prohibited from sleeping under bridges. Um, one of the things that happened with this pandemic is there's a certain number of our community lost the access to bathrooms, showers, and places where they could um, uh, get shelter during the day. My suggestion is to allow people input into city policies that are tend to be presently excluded. I'm executive director for the nonprofit organization Colorado Normal. Our mission is to move public opinion by working with government officials to progress the growing cannabis community. We want to assure cannabis consumers have access to high quality cannabis that is safe, convenient, and affordable. We, our organization supports the proposed marijuana delivery code and would respectfully suggest minimal changes which have a significant impact on both dispensaries and consumers. Um, I'm just calling to advocate for medical delivery um, here in Longmont. My background is as follows. I'm a graduate of West Point. I was a federal prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and pretty much all we did was fight the war on drugs. Now I'm in private practice and service a lot of cannabis clients. I strongly support cannabis home delivery. Uh, I just wanted to call in and, and uh, voice my support for homeowners in the area being able to utilize Airbnb as a, as a means of alternative income. As a young homeowner in Longmont, uh, you know, it's it's hard to afford things, and it's nice to know that if times get really hard, we can make a little extra money. And I know that there is some talk about some problem Airbnb properties in the area, and, and uh, I would say that's probably the minority of what's going on. I just am a big supporter of property rights. That's all. Thank you a lot for your time. Thank you. All right, that concludes First Call Public Invited to be Heard. Let's move on to the consent, consent agenda. Item 9A is Ordinance 2020-39, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 6.70 of the Longmont Municipal Code to permit medical marijuana delivery. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for October 13th, 2020. 9B is Ordinance 2020-40, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapters 2.68 on local licensing authority, 6.70 on marijuana stores, and Chapter 9.60 on medical and recreational marijuana, public hearing and second reading scheduled for October 13, 2020. 9C is Ordinance 2020-41, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H74 to Best Steel LLC, public hearing and second reading scheduled for October 13, 2020. Uh, 9D is Ordinance 2020-42, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H32 to George and Evelyn Grell. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for October 13, 2020. 
9E is Ordinance 2020-43, a bill for an ordinance conditionally approving the vacation of access, utility, and drainage easements associated with the Highlands subdivision, generally located north of Highway 119 and west of County Line Road. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for October 13, 2020. 9F is Resolution uh, 2020-93, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and the University of Colorado for socio-technical design for a middleware information exchange hub. 9G is Resolution 2020-94, a resolution of the Longmont City Council authorizing agreements between the City of Longmont and Riverset LLC for the purchase of real property for the Resilient St. Brain Project. 9H is Resolution 2020-95, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City and the Colorado Department of Transportation for grant funding to support the Main Street Revitalization Project. 9I is Resolution 2020-96, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City and the 20th Judicial District for a Victim Assistance and Law Enforcement Grant. 9J is Resolution 2020-97, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the grant application for an intergovernmental agreement between the City and the Colorado Department of Public Safety, Division of Criminal Justice Office for Victims Grant Programs for grant funding for victim services. 9K is Resolution 2020-98, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City and the Regional Air Quality Council for grant funding for electric vehicle charging stations. 9L is Resolution 2020-99, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the City to apply for a grant from the Colorado Department of Local Affairs for grant funding for the Peace Officer Mental Health Grant Program. 9M is Resolution 2020-100, a resolution of the Longmont City Council naming the Union Reservoir Swim Beach in honor of former Longmont Mayor Fred Wilson. 9N approved $25,000 grant from the Temple Hoyne Buell Foundation to support the Longmont Early Childhood Bright Eyes Initiative. 9O is approved amendment to Boulder Air Contract Addendum. And 9P is approved one capital improvement program amendment. All in favor of passing the consent agenda, minus those letters, and we'll go through them one at a time, um, say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. All right. We'll get that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that all out in a second. All right. 10A, Ordinance 2025, or sorry, Ordinance 2020-35, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the City of Longmont, Colorado, open space sales and use tax revenue, refunding and improvement bond series 2020. Is there a staff report? There's not, correct? All right. That's correct. Any questions correct. from council? All right. Seeing none, um, let's go ahead and open it for public hearing. All right. Um, seeing nobody else, let's go ahead and close the public hearing on Ordinance 2020-35. All right. Any discussion from council? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Councilmember Waters? I'm, I move approval of Ordinance 2020-35. I'll second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, Ordinance 2020-35 passes unanimously. All right, Ordinance 2020-36, the bill for an ordinance making additional appropriations for expenses and liabilities of the City of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020. Let's go ahead and open the public hearing, but nobody's on the line, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, can we have a motion? Dr. Uh, Dr. Waters, you want to unmute yourself? And... I will. I will. Um move approval of ordinance 2020-36. Councilmember Christensen, you almost did it. All right, it's been moved and second, moved by Dr. Waters, seconded by Councilmember Christensen. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, ordinance 2020-36 passes unanimously. Ordinance 2020-37, a bill for an ordinance repealing and reenacting chapter 15.05.020 of the Longmont Municipal Code on the protection of streams and creeks, wetlands, repairing areas, and 15.05.030 on habitat and species protection and amending chapters 15.08.070 on non-conforming structures and 15.10-020 on all other terms defined. Um, I thought that we voted to include in this rare native fish and rare wetland songbirds. Real, real, real quick then, so does anyone have a problem waiting two weeks so we can get the re the, the actual, I mean, the actual ordinance into the, the, the packet so we can vote on what's there? Right. Okay. okay, so I'm actually going to suggest, I'm just going to, let's go ahead and pull it and then we're going to wait, okay? Let's move on to ordinance 2020-38, or item 10D, a bill for an ordinance organizing the LFM Business Improvement District, providing for an election of the Board of Directors of the District, and approving the 2020-2021 operating plan and budget for the district. 
<laughs> ordinance 2020-38. Okay, I move uh, ordinance 2020-38. I'll second it. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. All right, great. Now, let's, so let's go ahead to resolution 2020-100, a resolution renaming or just naming the swim beach after Fred Wilson. I believe uh, uh, Mayor Lang is here. Mayor Bagley and city council members, uh, as your packet tells you, this is a resolution to uh, name the Union Reservoir Swim Beach in the honor of former Mayor Fred Wilson. As you heard earlier, his daughter did a pretty good job of describing his passion involved in this and uh, he spent many, many hours um, trying to do the right thing for Union Reservoir. With that, I'd, I'd like to, I'd actually like to move uh, resolution 2020-100. I move that we um, name the Union Reservoir Swim Beach in honor of former Longmont Mayor Fred Wilson. Second. Second. All, right. All right, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Um, the swim beach in honor of former Mayor Fred Wilson. Um, the resolution is passed. It's done. So enjoy Fred's beach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor Thank Lang. You. Not sure, but just to cover Eugene, I move all the consent agenda. Catch all. If we miss something, it's all passed. A through P. Do I have a second? Mayor, you're good. You've got them all. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Doing your job. Mayor and City Council, Teresa Malloy, Budget Manager. So these are the topics we're going to uh, cover for you this evening. Each year as part of our um, budget process, staff reviews and, and updates our financial policies. Uh, the first one, a uh, new policy, is a policy around affordable housing. So this policy essentially uh, lays out the different types of revenue uh, that will be put into the affordable housing fund. For Two more new policies, uh, the one around the special marijuana sales tax. Uh, we do have a few policies that, as I mentioned, are beyond just uh, minor clarification. And the first one is in the oil and gas revenue policy. And the living wage requirement, this one, uh, we are adding, again, what's in blue uh, to better align with the actual contract languages. And the investment vehicle adding, again, that section in blue, that one of the vehicles that the city can invest in is general or revenue municipal bonds. And finally, the last one to bring to your attention is the electric utility reserve. Uh, it, uh, the policy itself is not changing, just a note on the implementation statement. I just talked about uh, financial policies there is a financial policy for recreation fees, and it requires that we uh, generate 80% self-sufficiency through the fees that we charge for our programs and services. So we have uh, found that uh, there's been two major areas that have impacted um, recreation based on the, the, the virus and uh, people coming to the rec center. So with that, uh, recreation is anticipating that our revenues are going to be down 25% uh, last year or next year. This slide gives you an example of uh, how our revenue and attendance has been over the last uh, several years. So what the budget includes is a 25% uh, reduction in all areas of the uh, budget, excluding regular and part-time benefited uh, employees and the benefits that match that. Staff will uh, start uh, looking at uh, how we can meet our budget and what programs we can offer based on the budget we would have available. In our uh, general fund, we have one point, almost $3 million of one-time funding. And in the public safety fund, we have a total of 775,000 of one time. Um, one of our financial policies uh, that I didn't cover with you this evening, but it is in the packet, in our financial policy um, packet is um, the incremental development funding. 
And this slide shows you uh, what is covered um, under those incremental development revenue. So with apologies to council members, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my last comments are gonna be a, a, a little sharper um, and point pointed. I wanna to say to Boulder County Democrats that your arrogance and disrespect of Longmont and elected officials is insulting, at least to this council member. Boulder County, Boulder County Democrats clearly believe, based on what I read, that Longmont City Council members and the city manager are not smart enough to design public private partnerships that serve the interests of Longmont residents, taxpayers, and investors. Boulder County Democrats apparently also believe ballot questions voted down by Longmont voters in one election cycle should not again appear on a subsequent ballot. So Boulder County Democrats, in the interest of an informed, balanced, respectful, and nonpartisan local election, reconsider your position. With that, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Thank you, Councilor. Okay. I'll, I'll, I was going to second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. And that motion passes unanimously. And I will see you guys at the latest next Tuesday. All right. Later, guys. Thank you.